Do well, I have like seven percent battery, so this should this should be good. <laughs> It's like eight percent more than you had last time. <laughs> now I know he's definitely messing with us. <laughs> Three. Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Tate. And this is our show about anything and everything off-road. I've actually been looking forward to this episode for a while, trying to get Tate back on the show. Um, as always, we're socially distant. Uh, Ross is in the Northeast, I'm in the Midwest, and Tate's in Oregon. But in reality, Tate's everywhere. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I'm not giving you anything. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was, I thought I was, uh, yeah, I was being a good uh, uh, guest. And just, I thought you said you guys had stuff to talk about. I was supposed to shut up. Yeah. Actually. That's what you said. <laughs> that is not what I said. Yeah. I said, up. you're allowed to comment on everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. The good news is that's the show. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll export this out and uh, it'll be live tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. It will be somewhere else by then. Yeah, and everyone else will be in a different location. It'll be totally fine. Yep. <laughs> uh, Ross, you're the only one who has any personal updates tonight. Yes, uh, I have been driving the GMC Canyon AT4, the new one that is all new. You can't see my hand quotes, I don't think, because I'm off frame here. Uh, but it is all new for the 2023 model year. Um, they did kind of what Ford did with the new s650 mustang and like it's the same chassis just slightly changed so that it is quote unquote new um the at4 has the 2.7 turbo that they first put in the silverado and uh and it's got what they say is 310 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque um I have some questions about that, about whether those numbers are accurate, because it does not entirely feel like that much power. Um, I think we have lost Tate, so hopefully he rejoins. No, we'll um, figure it out. In the interim, yeah, so the AT4, I mean, it starts at 44. The one I have was like 49, or have currently, it's still here. Um, and it's got tons of nice shit, you know, it's got heated and cooled seats uh, with tech package, a sunroof. Um, all the safety vents, radar cruise control stuff that you'd expect. Um, It does have a real two-speed transfer case. Um, And, you know, it drives fine. Like, it it drives like a midsize truck with, like, nicer interior accoutrements, you know? It's, It's... I'm having a little bit of trouble with it because everybody came back from the first drives and was like, this is the greatest thing ever because, you know, the Tacoma is fucking ancient at this point. Well, but it's like, go ahead, Chris. Did they come back from the AT4 or the AT4X launch? Super excited. Uh, probably the AT4X, which has. Yeah, that's the one I felt like. Yeah, that has 33s and then the. the and it gets AV. the upper echelon of the engine tune. like Exactly. The AEV-ified one gets 35s. Um, but you know, it's 50 grand for a midsize truck with a turbo four and a frame that's effectively like eight or nine years old. And like, it, it feels like, and it drives like it in the back seat. Like I can't sit behind myself, you know? Um, but you can't, you can't sit behind yourself. Not even close. No, not even close. Well, I think, I think that's also physically impossible. To sit be, yeah, yourself. <laughs> man, uh, Plus, can, can we also just, I mean, uh, you guys have more experience with the new GMCs and stuff. My wife drives a Z71 uh, Tahoe, mm-hmm. one of the newer ones. Nice. And they're, but from where they came from like eight years ago when there was like six inches of frame hanging below the body line oh, and like wow. a tank. Like the, the, and the AT4s look, they look awesome. Like oh, I've wow. every, every GMC I see driving around, I mean, they've, they've come so friggin' far from where they were Dude. Just, just a short leap ago. No question whatsoever, it looks the look. And I mean, the tires they have on this thing have like crazy aggressive sidewall siping, but then the tread itself is like kind of like highway all terrainy. Um, so they definitely. All OEM tires are complete garbage. <laughs> Fuck, man. And, and I have no qualms whatsoever saying that those tires that 
GM puts on the ZR2 uh, Silverado. Those what are the good. Oh, we all remember the rugged trails, the BFG rugged trails from yesteryear. Oh yeah, those are no. We Even don't, we, don't, we don't talk about those. Bit, you know, plug ears for the the Michelins they put on the Broncos are trash. Yeah, uh, there are just very, happen to be Michelins. Very few. Is that what I don't? Well, I don't know. What, whatever they are, they're trash. And I went out and proved it on the Rubicon. We can talk about that later if we want. But we know, definitely talk about that later. Side by on, side comparison, they are they are trash. The wait, so on which Bronco? On the Sasquatch Bronco? The one on yeah, whatever stupid. Yeah, yeah thirty five is Michelins that that come. They're just like rain no. tire. Dude, those are the uh, the Goodyear Territory MTs. Those are the same ones that that they have on the uh, TRX. And that Chevy puts on the ZR2 so, uh, Silverado. Yeah, Silverado ZR2. They're terrible. They're just horrible tires. I, 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 like, I swap mine immediately out for Milestar or Patagonia. Everyone can yes. just drive in and say whatever they want about Patagonias. But, uh, but I went through, I was one of the first 10 Broncos to go through the Rubicon Trail. Nice. And the, 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 the early, the, that big run of like the engineers that took them through, we got all the, the footage mm-hmm. of them like, Yep. Slipping all over the place. And I went through not two months later on the same rig, stock setup, same size, and Milestar Patagonias and mm-hmm. walked everything uh, first try that they were failing hard at. Yeah. So. The, the, I've seen those tires grip some stuff that even like, you know, full on mud terrains don't. Hey, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Dude, when you provide visuals. Miles on them? What's that? Those have 40,000 miles on them? No, no, oh. but in and then out, I, those are brand new right there. Uh, I, mean, <laughs> whew, I was like, Jesus that was, that, that, that's, to be honest, that's the, that's the, you know, they support uh, Sons of Smokey, so we support Milestar tires. Uh, oh, yeah. And so, yes, I'm always, I'm always going to be you know, out front with our, our sponsors and stuff. I'm always going to, you know, ride for the brand yeah. uh, at any given time. They don't put any money in my pocket, but like, you know, they, they, they help us mm-hmm. out with tires on my personal ring. Uh, so I'm always going to help them out. But that, I mean, that being said, you can't, you can't run an off-road event on tires alone. So, I mean, we very rarely do use, you know, product brand deals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Martin, Martin uh, Castro, the rep out there, is one of the guys in the industry, he's a total stud and his tires freaking hold up, man. Mm-hmm. Two round trips to Moab, Steel Revenge, uh, or Steel Bender, Hell's Revenge. Steel Revenge. Oh, Steel Revenge. That's a new trail. We and, no, we did Steel Bender. And Hell's Bender. Yes. In my rig this year. And man, if you've never been through that trail before, it's got a couple surprises at the end for you if you've never been. Uh, but also the Rubicon Trail. Uh, um, all, you know, drove down a thousand miles, ripped it in a day and a half, and then ripped all the way home and a thousand miles home, and those tires performed flawlessly. I've been thinking about them from the next set. Got that, uh, got that tire problem where it's like, had these for a year and a half. What's next? You know, same thing with like suspension. It's a, I, <laughs> I usually go through different vehicles in a year and a half. It, so. It's funny you say that because the other day as I was driving the Suburban, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I have a slow leak on the left front or if it's just gotten down on the wear, but like I can hear the left front now. And in my, oh boy premier trim suburban like i don't ever really hear the tires and i'm already thinking about like all right when this set's done what am i going to next because especially because like the suburbans become so much of just a highway cruiser right now like i have those uh what are they redstein pinza ats that's like the a mild all-terrain tire like it's it's really meant for more highway miles than all-terrain and to be honest the tire has functioned great snow off-road gravel whatever but i can hear it now and it's frustrating me <laughs> yeah. yeah i hope redstone comes out with something a little more aggressive too because they make good shit it's just like that's not going to do well in the mud yeah you know? i can already like yeah anyways summarize canyon 84 uh need to spend more time with the "Quote unquote new truck to really come away with a verdict." Um, with the, like the two, part obviously. I noticed major for you is this was Canyon interior, and I went I grabbed the photo I took of the Colorado Z seventy one, which my computer just like totally okay. There we go. <laughs> Look yeah. how bland and boring that Colorado sure. interior is. Okay, but the Colorado is going to be probably I'll call it five grand cheaper, model to model. And I don't even think it's honestly, five. My biggest problem with the Canyon is that it 
it feels like it's trying to be something it's not, which like I've spent plenty of time in expensive trucks that, you know, aren't just like we, how many times have we talk about the Sierra Denali ultimate and the Yukon Denali ultimate, you know? Yeah. Those are and hilarious. Like, they're hilarious, but at least like, it feels like the quality that they hit at one point goes across the entire vehicle. And in the Canyon, it just feels like <laughs> if it's going to be an AT4, why does it have all this fancy leather, you know, make it like a Z71, make it like, durable off-roady like enthusiast adventurous shit not just like what they're using as a placeholder until they launch the canyon denali you know it's it just yeah and fucking rectangular fender flares man well rectangular fender flares and wheels that look like they might have richards attached to it oh Couples. yeah i see that let's put some wings yep. on those i like that dude chris pull a picture of the last what was it the the, the first <laughs> Colorado zero two wheels. I mean, sorry. <laughs> is it robot dicks? <laughs> yeah. I think that's the first time that phrase has actually been said on this show, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> Am I allowed to say <laughs> naughty words on here? Oh, oh God, yeah. Fuck you on. Yeah. We, we put the explicit tag. Yeah, we have... Uh, <laughs> we... Uh, Ross, what year are you thinking? Do like a 2018 Colorado ZR2. I okay. think those were the wheels that were literally just like... These are... Oh, just, yeah, no, no, it is. Yeah. There's no way around it. So I think what I think what you guys may be glossing over here is that like uh in, in Zach, you guys are aware of the influencer Zach D Dull? Yes. Zach Dull. yes. So he came he came out and spent a week with us and he came up to my place and he borrowed my Bronco. And he was kind of complaining about interior stuff and that and like and I finally I sent him off with it with the doors off and then he's like, Oh, I get it now. And I, I think if you have the doors off and mud terrains on, mm -hmm. then you kind of forget. Oh, those are dirt tracks. Those are tight. Dirt tracks, right? Are good. But the those, those the wheels, wheels are, are very. Those are. <laughs> that is a shaft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if you just pull the doors off, you'll never notice any other. And you'll have no interior complaints whatsoever. Yeah. Because there's so many other sensory stuff going on. But can you pull the doors off a canyon regularly? Oh, you can pull the doors off of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can. That's why I look a lot of hey. <laughs> tier. <laughs> the best is when guys on with like XJs pull the doors off and they're like, it's a G, yeah. dude. Like, mm. Dude, you can't. Wait, I I take the doors off my Pontiac Vibe, dude. Yeah. You still have that yeah. thing? I used, to, yeah, I used to pull them off my Tacoma when I was a kid, too. Just because, like, like, why not? It's awesome. No, I don't take the top off my Bronco. I take the doors off. Take the top off the vibe. But I, I did see a Matrix at the Steel Yard just just three or four days ago that had the top cut off for no other reason than it was being scrapped or something. And I was like, that, that looks good. Hey, if there's a will, there's a way. There's definitely so, a will. Right. I definitely am. There's I want a way. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so speaking of the vibe... <laughs> Hey, what's going on in your world? How's things? Things are awesome. You guys caught me at a really relaxing time in my life. Uh, when we just got <laughs> done with the gambler uh, uh, last, the weekend before last. So the July 14th, 15th, 16th, depending on when this thing airs. Uh, we just got done with it and it was a resounding success. Like we did, we are still waiting on, on tonnage numbers, but we know that we at least got in the 300,000 pound mark for, for weight, for trash, um, which is, uh, yeah, but second now that behind our world record we sent we set last year, unless we got some some crazy numbers back from Republic Services uh, who did all of our dumpsters because last year we ran out of dumpsters and we just started mounting it on top of each other till we had mm -hmm. a giant trash mountain and uh, trash mountain. and and that took three weeks and 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 extra thirty plus thousand dollars to get rid of because oh, then you've got to sort it heavy equipment operators, you know, and make it all happen. So we brought in all the right dumpsters. We, we brought in, I actually got to run the excavator this year uh, and made sure everything was tamped down. So we got to fill everything up well. Um, and so we should be close, but the numbers, the, the poundage never doesn't really tell the whole story because if we ever had a, a you know, if there's a giant trash dump and we went out and we filled trash truck after trash truck with this, with this excavator, uh, it's not going to tell the story of where this trash came from because we all know as avid outdoorsmen, off-roaders, hunters, hikers, that this trash is dispersed over hundreds of thousands of acres. Right. And to be able to send out that many flying monkeys to pick up that couch, that set of tires all over the place, 
uh, is an impossible feat. And so, mm-hmm. you know, even if it was just a hundred thousand pounds, which is still, That's still crazy. Big, huge numbers, um, uh, to be able to do that, the amount of man hours and in effort, blood, sweat, and tears that it takes to, to get that stuff is just incredible. that had a goat in it, by the way, that smelled rancid. That had a dead goat in it, and it smelled disgusting. The hood of that bus, holy yeah, smoke. Gross. I cannot describe to you how was there what the a, hood of that school bus smelled like. Uh, there's a lot of questions surrounding how that there, happened. But... Dude, hey, I'm, I'm left with them, and you're not going to get any answers to that today because yeah. I have them as well. That's I don't a... know why. There, it was, it was t- tilted forward, and it looked like a goat had been sacrificed in the front of the bus. Mm. So uh, it, was, it was rancid. Uh, but with anyone who's ever been to, uh, you know, within two miles of the east side of Ben, Redmond, and Madras, Central Oregon has a big public dumping, big houses problem, um, which are intertwined, but also then kind of enable a lot of locals who don't have the, the means or the education to dispose of their trash correctly. And so it gets a lot of it gets compiled and blamed on the houseless, which is its own issue, but then a lot of it is not just people, but also businesses. We find tire caches out there from tire companies really? that are at one thousand percent, which has also been confirmed. You know, our suspicions, at least, um, you know, through the Forest Service and the LELs out there. I mean, you don't go out and find two hundred tires in one spot from no, oh, just perfectly stacked right. sets of four, not perfectly stacked, right. but all piled together. Somebody didn't want to go pay the five dollar tire fee. Um, you know, you know, five. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's a little bit of money. It's a thousand bucks. Um, Right there, so they just dumped it out in public land, blame it on the houseless, and then off they go. But uh, I think it's bullshit. So yep. part yeah, of our part, yeah. part of our, our next phase, we do do you know trash collection, but part of what we want to do is uh, is you know prevention. So mm-hmm. yeah, so backing up for the listeners who are listening <laughs> and not watching, uh, Tate is the man and the I guess myth and legend behind the Gambler Five Hundred, um, and I think everybody in our you know our automotive and off-road world at this point has at least heard of gambler. Um, <clears throat> most people probably know what it is or know somebody who's participated in it. And I think the byproduct of it that most people don't, you know, most people like in the probably 20 to 35 or 40 demographic see stuff on Instagram or, or YouTube of people thrashing, you know, shit boxes off road and they go, Oh, I want to do that. Like I want to be part of that. It looks fun. I'm like, hell yeah, it looks fun. Uh, but the byproduct and the, I guess, s- not ulterior, but like the motive that you guys organizing the whole thing have is actually the cleanup portion of it, which is what you were just talking about. So, yeah, I, do, how do, so what can you do for the education side of things to try to get ahead of it and prevent this? Well, and we're doing it. And, and part of that ties in what you just said about people not knowing. And because, you know, if, if, if I said, hey, guys, tomorrow we're going to go pick up some garbage, um, not everyone's going to be super excited about going out and doing that. Um, but if we said, hey, guys, we're going to go off roading and race shit boxes and you go have adventures and do all this fun jazz, then all of a sudden you're in. But then if I said, what, what, what if while we do it out here, we're going to be collecting trash? You might ho hum a bit, but once you get out there, and you get angry about the shit that's out there on public land, which is your land. Even even you guys spread out across the country. You come out to Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management land in Oregon. That's yours. It's not it's not state land. This is this is federal land. It's there for and it's insane. Half of this state is public land. You can come out here and overland and explore and do all sorts of rad stuff. Uh, you can get angry about all the stuff that's that's left out there, but you can also do something. And so when we grew from a small group of, you know, 20, you know, guys, just me and my buddies uh, chasing each other around out in the forest to, you know, groups of, you know, you know close to seven, 8,000 people at one singular event here in Oregon, That's then amazing. obviously uh, has grown into more of a national phenomenon where we let people use the name as long as they're not trying to profit off it and just have fun like we always used to do. Um, it, it becomes, it becomes, um, now it's now it's a it's a it's a um, we're putting more and more usage and using more resources and putting um, putting pressure on on public land. So we said, well, what can we do to you know, alleviate that? We don't want to charge you know a bunch of money or more money than we already have to, to you know for insurance and porta potties and the bands and everything that we do. But so what can we do to be nonsense, make sure yeah. we're a net benefit? And so that is what if we just because I we were, I was threatened with a felony with a federal felony for years. 
for having an unlicensed event, an unpermanent event. And I'm like, guys, like, you know, there's there's a way to do this where we don't have to go through the standard protocol of, of, of permitting, which is just employ people to go out and do some good while they're out there. And that's, we've, mm -hmm. we've succeeded, but you know, it's, it's been 10 years in the making. So. Yep. And what was the, the weight figure that you said before for the record? The record currently is last year was 426,000 pounds. That's a uh, so I think we got quite a bit more vehicles last year. And so that, that helped bump us up because we, we got like a 25,000 pound school bus this year. Uh, so that, that helped bump our, our vehicle, our vehicle tonnage. Uh, up to about 100k total. Um, whether or not you're lumping you know, campers and RVs and stuff, because we got a ton of those. But yeah, that guy's like that's yeah, Austin's the Thunder Turd. Uh, some guy yeah flipped a, a Tacoma that was dumped out there on the back of his rig, and that, that's me inside the excavator there. Onyx, thank you guys very much. Hey, How much that? fun is that? So much fun. It's my favorite <laughs> thing to do. I got to bury a horse uh, the day before yesterday in one too. That while well, that doesn't sound as much fun at least i got to run an excavator but i got called yep. because i can run yep. an excavator and, and <laughs> uh, it's so good so you said you I, had oh uh, hold on time out did you say you buried a horse yeah first time okay yeah all right that's that's a new one for me i, I didn't fun for you no know, i thought this came up i got i i i you know i don't know if you guys audit my instagram but i really like to like dabble and like extreme trolling where I, I tempt the most extreme groups of either, you know, political aisle to come in and engage <laughs> and have a conversation. Usually it ends horribly. Oh, which is, yeah. is I'm funny. very aware of that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah uh, Cause I don't, cause, yeah, I mean, I'm a, a, I'm a, liber I'm probably libertarian. I don't freaking know. I have no idea why, cause I don't <laughs> pay attention to politics, but I know that, that, yeah, I've, I have I've done the mop trucks and like to make it be, but I also, you know, like believe in universal health care and, you know, yeah. women's autonomy or just people's autonomy uh, and small government. Um, but, uh, yeah, I know I was at, and, and uh, yeah, Andy went over to the Willie Nelson concert and it was 90 degrees and his mom's horse died. And so he called oh, me man. and I could hear it in his voice. He was like, fuck, it's probably the last time I'm ever going to get to see Willie Nelson live. And I was like, buddy, I'll, I'll take, I'll take this one. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. So, yeah. <laughs> so we gave her, we gave her a proper burial. She's a sweet thing. She was 35 years old. She's been around a long oh, time. Oh man. Uh, my daughter had gone down to, to, to feed her on multiple occasions and they were there out of town. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah, buried horse. That was a new one. Wow. Yeah. That, that's a, uh, check that box off the list of things you never thought you'd do. Right. Yeah, I know. Whoa. Well, there, yeah, there's been a few. I ate horse in uh, Iceland once too. Um, eight horse. Well, they all yeah. eat horse in Iceland. They, they yeah, say, that I knew they that one. Say that they don't, they say they don't, but you drive around the countryside and, and the amount of horses to cows is about a thousand to one. And you've never seen an old horse in Iceland. And they, <laughs> they're like, wonder why. They're like, I don't know, maybe we yeah. eat horses and then, but you're eating horse. Uh, but I, you're Mc, you're McDonald's eating horse. in, uh, in Iceland are getting audited. <laughs> It's not bad, man. We ate whale at the same time, which is also not, it's a, what do they call it? A, 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 God, Steve Rinella has a, a charismatic megafauna. That's animals that we care about because they're cute. Yeah. You know, or, or we care about like all, but like what the cow or the pig sitting there being like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Not cute enough. <laughs> I got a nervous system too, a central nervous system too, but what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. So, so you speak of things you haven't done before, uh, under underground go-kart racing. Um. No, it's, <laughs> it's the new thing. You guys got to come out. You gotta come out. Uh, it it looks hilarious. <laughs> oh man, I I like the phrase "fun way to die," and I'm so glad you guys have roll gauges on those things. When uh, you're gonna die, these particular psychopaths in this video is a local <laughs> is a local dad's group that likes to get together and do this. I'll and they that. are they are hands down the worst drivers that I've ever met <laughs> in my entire life. I have no. They have no sympathy or racing etiquette. You know, I mean, when you're going around a go-kart track, and you, we all know, we all play Gran Turismo, we know that you can head into a, the apex of a corner and punt the guy on, on uh -huh. from the inside, right? Yeah. But you don't. But you don't. But unless you're racing with 12-year-olds or these grown-ass men out here, they will try <laughs> to kill you oh every single lap. Dude, the amount of lights on these things is amazing. I cannot overstate how dangerous these men are. They're absolutely like, 
I hang out with gamblers and crazy people all the time, and these <laughs> men have have are the most dangerous people I've ever hung out with in my entire life. Dude, yeah. the Taylor Swift flag is amazing. That's yeah. my that's my <laughs> cart right there. This looks like it. Well, a because really because I knew that time. maybe there were some like they were kind of maybe farther on the political spectrum than I was, so I showed up with a half rack of Bud Light and a Taylor Swift flag. Hell, <laughs> that's the way to do it. But yeah. but still, we party though, right? Like no one, no one gives a shit. Oh, we're gonna go out there and spill blood, and beer, and and hang yeah. out, and you know, you know, and no one gives a shit. It's funny, it's dude. Funny my Ross, so funny. In the daylight, when you see the roll cages, no one's head is below the roll cages. Oh no, that Bruce yeah. Yeah. No well, but these in the daylight, down. these are all rational people who actually have some semblance of race and etiquette. In the dark, these guys are the these guys are nuts. <laughs> These guys have been cooped up in their in their in their suburban homes too long. They got bitched at by their wives for yeah. too many hours. These guys are nuts. Hey, oh in my cases gosh. of beer person later, I want to know who's uh, who's Land Cruiser Piggy that is in the background of one of those clips. That's uh, Aussies. I think that's Aussies. Yeah, that's a cool fucking truck. Yeah, Chris, did you see that? No, I'm, I'm, no uh, I missed it. Wait for it in the back there, there right there, blue and white. The blue and white one. Yeah. I see next uh, yeah, we have quite a bit of quite a bit of. Uh, uh, there was a few piggies this year. Gambler, quite a few eighty series. I didn't see a forty. Um, you know, I didn't see any. I didn't see any sixty series either. Uh, they're getting more scars. I, a couple hundred series. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, sixties uh, uh, are getting bought up by all the friggin' like icon guys now. Flip them. I've got two. So. You, well, yeah. It's, consider yourself yeah, but, a lucky one. Isn't one of I yours on my, like my, less than dollars dollars each? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No doors <laughs> or scissor There's doors. Doors. One's one's yeah. One's pretty nice. One's on portal axles and and I've destroyed. Mm. It was nice before, but it was my first wheeling rig. It was it was that was when I didn't. Have, I bought it for eight hundred bucks and it was I fixed it up all nice and then it was the only thing I had to take wheeling. You know, yeah. I mean, I somehow managed to keep it through the recession of 08, which. I didn't have I didn't have shit to my name back then, and so I managed to hold on to the cruiser at least. Whose Willie's is this? It's gonna uh, share now. Gonna get? Oh, it's my dad's. Is it? He's got I freaking two, love a, a wagon. He's way that he's got. Uh, then he's got that Willie's wagon. His dad uh, was a big Jeep guy, and then his dad uh, ran, owned the, uh, the the Willie's, the Jeep Willie's dealership in Sacramento, and it's one of the first oh, wow. Jeep Jamboree guys. Yeah, I've got. Really cool footage of them going over the Rubicon and doing their Jeep races back in the '60s. Like neat stuff. But yeah, my dad is a total Jeep That's dork. Great. He freak he, he he freaks out all that stuff. I love Jeeps, but I also love fucking with Jeep more than anything. Oh yeah, dude, loud and proud. The uh, Cruiser Outfitter sticker, the Jeeps are shit sticker. <laughs> but uh, so all right. right, so so you've uh, you've fawned over the footage of old school Rubicon stuff. Have. Uh, have you noticed any truth behind the notion that like people are putting bigger tires on trucks and, and axles are getting bigger and trucks are getting bigger and the trails are getting harder for more normal vehicles as a result because they're digging out the obstacles and, you know, undercutting everything? Well, yeah. So we experienced that this last year when I took the Bronco through and we took a, a Rover on 33s and an 80 series on 35s before the Jeep Jamboree. So when you're picking a weekend to go do the Rubicon, you got to be careful about it. And the first, before Jambo turns around, that's a locals only trail. And and we, we like it, it's basically like showing up to, to, to Seaside or the locals beach in Hawaii and like they, they get upset and they're, yeah. they're pissy pants about it. I mean, I've got enough, you know, provenance there that I, I mean, they don't give a fuck that I'm that, you know, that I've been doing this trail. I'm a fourth generation Rubicon, <laughs> you know, guy. Yeah. Um, but, but to be honest, that's a, that's a throwback to, it only recently got kind of something that 33s could do in the last decade, you know, when we're talking about pirates, the four by four, you know, uh, yeah. pirates, four, you know, four by four club and in the late nineties and early two thousands, I mean, that was a hardcore trail. I mean, it got, those holes got filled in mm -hmm. and they were basically paving it. So you had this battle between the, you know, the guys on 33s, you know, with, you know, could a Tacoma on 33s make it back then? No. Can it make it now after the Jamboree? Yeah. Before the Jambo, I would not try it. Mm. 
it those holes are deep and those holes are are, are rough it's uh so yeah the jam jambo comes through it's a bunch of hand holding uh all the jeep crews there out there in front of everybody fill all the holes for you and it's just a hey i did the rubicon trail it says rubicon on our on our nameplate mm -hmm. um and so all the rocks are spread out so they get dug out spit out and if you want to go stack them back in there do it yeah if you've never been on the rubicon trail and you've got a rig you know with smaller than 35s then you know don't do it before jambo mm -hmm. and then after that it's uh <laughs> It's a highway, <laughs> not a highway. Yeah, and don't don't go Memorial Day weekend. You know, you know, I take my family through. It's my tradition. Uh, uh, my grandpa took my dad through. I took my dad through too because he he wasn't quite back into four wheeling yet. Uh, yeah, That's there's awesome. some boy. There's big Willie with me. Yeah, we're taking a bone stock uh, uh, Bronco through. Um, we were probably yeah one of the first ten uh, stock Broncos to make it through, if not the first ten just Broncos in general because no one had come out with an aftermarket yet. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, drove drove all the way home. And there's, yeah. So I took the wheels and tires off that rig that was going by Ford. Hey, there's Grandpa. And there's me and my dad on the, with the 60. There's my daughter and I in the Gladiator. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm glad you were able to pull that out. How much did you yeah. have to lean on the lockers on the Bronco to get through? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, my buddy likes to try everything in two-wheel drive first and then engage the rear locker and then engage the front locker. I'm a one and done guy. I'm, if I'm going to go wheeling with IFS, I don't, I just don't want to run the risk. And so, yeah. you know, I will never, if it's a straight shot, I'll engage the front locker. If I know I have to turn, then that sucker's staying off. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, quite a bit. Rear locker, a thousand percent, you're using it. I will always reach for the cheat code on the dash for the front locker. Um, so yeah, I, I use them all. I, and, and, but it's not necessary. Front locker's not necessary. The guy in the Rover did not have a front locker. Uh, I was on 33s and had no gear and added no additional gear reduction. Mm -hmm. And so he had to hit everything with speed. And so dropping down into, you know, from, from big sluice into the springs, that's a rough go, uh, you know, when it's all pitted out. Um, but climbing Cadillac and having to hit things, actually it's a climb out of Buck Island. That's probably the most aggressive to the top of, of, uh, of uh of big sluice that that might be one of the more scary parts but then there's a few there's a few things you have to hit with speed yeah if you're in a mm -hmm. five-speed jeep or anything without without a, a crawl box on it then like i always wince a little bit when he said that he doesn't get a he doesn't get a crawl in then hit it and out for the best oh man that's always fun what uh, when you say no gear reduction you mean he didn't Gear down there's no crawl he, box. Not, yeah, I mean he's got a transfer two, case, but he doesn't he doesn't case. have it. He doesn't have a you know a, you know a, the crawl box and you know Marlin yeah. crawler or yeah. I've got an Orion doubler in my forty. You know that basically okay. gives, me, gives me another. And then the the romper stompers got one to one in the portals, and then we did mm -hmm. advanced adapters, four to ones in the transfer case. And so yeah, okay. we, you know those are all. And plus it's automatic. Wheel and automatics is so much better. It's so much. The only reason old Jeeps and Toyota guys won't say it is because you know they're purists with they want they want three you know levers in there to yep. that stuff but it's yeah. even then you can get in a lot of trouble that way because if you're going down a face we ran into this on steel bender this last year if you're if you're in low low and you have to try to throttle out of something where you think you're going to tip over you don't there's just no way you don't have it and mm -hmm. so i like i like wheeling with automatics yeah it, me too i think yeah. there i'm is, old uh, now <laughs> There's a point where driving stick and being able to enjoy off-roading and not just be focusing on pedals the whole time, you know, it crosses over into like, just have fun, you know? But well, uh, we're all yeah. trying to, to gain a mechanical advantage. That's why we have big tires. That's why we have tons. That's why we have flockers. That's why we do these things. Automatic is another mechanical advantage. It gives you your... Yes. your uh, you're getting another, you know, you know, another set of gear reduction uh, there with a torque converter, mm -hmm. and, right? Yeah. And it, and now, probably... oh, RIP forty nines. Those suckers are gone. Are they? <laughs> How much do those things weigh each? Like one hundred and fifty pounds. I don't. I more, wait. Yeah, way more than that. No, way more than I'd ever want to deal with on trail. Uh, the axles, though, themselves are with the the tons, kingpin tons, with the portal boxes are. Is obscenely obscenely heavy, but with that three FE, uh, she still she still she still eats. She does good. I have zero intention of ever putting a small block in that. I I'm trying to find 
I'm looking for weights of 49 inch tires and I'm getting tractor tire weights. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, those are those are double bead locks and yeah, and those are yeah, those are obscenely tough to mount and extraordinarily heavy and very leaky. I wanted nothing to do with owning a rig on those tires. I want to at least be able to drive to a trail that's 30 miles away, hit the trail and drive home. Yeah. And so 42s is as much tire as you'll ever need on a on a on a wheeling trail. Unless you're a snow wheeling or you're mudding. 42 it's just anything bigger than that's stupid and it's too wide and yeah, it's, it gets in your way if you're going I would crazy, walk that old rig now on 42s walk it and if if you're really going that crazy in the snow or the mud like you don't want to be driving more than 30 miles on the road to get there anyways because it's no like, yeah no it's gonna be miserable but uh for the record 49 by 21 on a 20 inch wheel for swampers is 168 pounds. Jesus. No, yeah, these were, these were trail worthy double D's. I bet they were quite a bit heavier than those. Cause you've got their, their two piece rims and they were, yeah, they were, I, I bet, I bet each one of those was 200 pounds that I was That's running off. Yes. Yeah, really. Just replacing parts like every trip. <laughs> Uh, not not with the axle tech portals and stuff like we really like it really reduces so I, we've got a, a double ram hydro from trail uh tra- trail not trail worthy was the trail gear trail gear the yeah. double ram on there and that we have we've had to do squanto to that thing because it doesn't have the yeah. horsepower to really hurt much we're still on leaves we're still sprung under so we don't have a lot of axle wrap um i've never broken anything on that truck to be honest with you <laughs> amazing oh crazy so but you've been also, hiding i'm not i'm not as hardcore as as a lot of, like i mean it, it, it doesn't get beat on i've got buddies who would laugh with the amount of you know the rock rash and shit that are on my rims like there's there are people out there who spend a lot more time raising out their trucks than i do mm-hmm. i mean my, my wife's daily now has rock crash on the other rims. <laughs> yeah, you did good on it, though. You did good. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one wheel. So, I, I mean. Um, yeah. Can we, uh, can we pivot to talking about whiskey? Yeah. Yeah. Can we, uh, well, sometimes can you got to do more than talk about it. Can we can you give us a uh, an update on the whiskey side of things? Oh, on Gambler Whiskey? Um. Yeah, I mean things are things are doing good. It's fine. My relationship with whiskey, I, I think, you know, even since we talked last, is like my enthusiasms. I don't I mean I feel bad saying this. It's just dwindled a little bit. Like you know, to be honest, while I do have a short glass of whiskey right here, um, I guess my enthusiasm for just for just having cocktails. I maybe mean, with that Hank song, uh, you know, all my rowdy friends have settled down. Like mm. drinking a lot more tea, you know. <laughs> just, Hangovers hurt a lot more than they used to. Yeah. And so oh, um, I don't know if that if that's what you know. To be honest, I started the whiskey thing to make money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And <laughs> and I just don't know if I have the like my passion has fallen into trash. My passion has fallen into the Sons of Smoky, of which we collect zero salaries. So you know, uh, Ford Bronco, you know, wrote a seventy five thousand dollar check this year into the Sons of Smoky. Uh, the goose egg is going to find itself into my pockets. Um, <laughs> it's it's all about, we want, we wanted to create, you know, like I said, about making money with whiskey or selling t-shirts, um, you know, creating this big ass party and stuff. We wanted to be 100% translucent with, or transparent with the translucent. So we'll finally get over into a macro uh, 501c3. So all our books would be published. And we, nice. we are, honestly, I couldn't be happier because nonprofits have been a vehicle for far too long for misuse uh, and misappropriation of funds. And just, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I commend people the way that people start them. They have good intentions, but once people get dollar cents in their eyes, everything gets screwed up. And so we wanted to create something that was, that was the completely pure in that aspect. If you want to come have fun or identify with gambler and do all that stuff, I could, I, I get it. And it's awesome. And we're trying to build a brand and it's my blood, sweat and tears for 10 years. But also if you're working at the gas station, the grocery store, or you're me 
you know, uh, uh, you know, getting by with nothing, you know, 10 years ago when we started all this, um, I didn't want, if you felt like you would, would want to be a part of something to contribute to something, I didn't want to ever take advantage of that, of the person that really believes in our mission. And so, yeah, hundred percent pass through well, every dollar goes straight to our intended, our intended purpose. Um, and I think that's the only way to truly run a nonprofit that mm-hmm. is, um, that's, that's going to stay, you know, focused on the goals. I get it. You have to hire people to, to handle, you know, your operations and all this infrastructure and stuff, but you're not getting the right people. Um, you're having to hire fundraisers to, to make, to get money, to hide, to pay all these people. Now all of a sudden you got a $3 million operation and 70% of it's going into payroll. And mm-hmm. that, that, that's not, that's not the point right. for us. And then least. that totally throws away the reason that it came to be in the first place. Yeah, especially when I had this discussion with uh, Jeremy Evans, who started PLS Org uh, out of Bend. They do a bunch of amazing work, and we work with them on stuff. And they were talking about, you know, about bringing on higher positions or paying themselves. And, and my big question to him was, what happens when you when you leave, when you get replaced? They don't have the same passion you did. They didn't come start this. They're business. You're hiring business people to come in and do this. They're going to treat it like a business, not 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 like a nonprofit, not with the same spirit that you started it with. So. Yeah. Interesting. Dude, I, lo- uh, I love yeah, the app, app too. Open. Yeah, that that's that's the thing that that's that's it, man. The app is is absolutely it. It it has cut our it was doubled our productivity. It's it's been developed as a vertical integration for other uh, stewardships and nonprofits and so we we have uh, the new iteration is going to have a drop down menu so any club, any four wheel drive club, any stewardship organization uh, any government agency that, that, that goes in and cleans up this trash is drop down menu to attribute them the credit for it so they can go apply. We'll, we'll provide the, the metric for, for them to go apply for grants and, and partnerships and sponsorships. And so we're not taking the credit. We don't need money. Uh, the app's built. We volunteer our time. We want to kind of spread the wealth. And so that's what this, that's what Thunder Smoke is all about. I have downloaded It's awesome. Yeah. There are yes. such passionate people out there. If you go out there, if, you know, the big organizations, we all know them. I won't name them off because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But it's the ones, uh, it's like Clean Desert, you know, uh, Discover Your Forest, the Friends of the Forest, the Friends of Your Local Forest, whatever that is. Those are the guys out there picking up trash on a daily basis that just need the trash bill paid. Mm-hmm. That's all yeah. they just need the money to do that. Yeah. They're willing to go sweat. They'll pay their own gas. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's just the, the you want to get a little bit of credit. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, there is Clean Desert. Those guys are amazing. They do yeah. rad work. Uh, so we want to celebrate everything that they're doing. That's so good. Yeah, it it's is. The and it's the only way we're going to fix it because the government, the goddamn government, has already proved that that, <laughs> that it's not going it, to. It's ineffectual. Yeah, you know, it's, it, they're not going to solve this problem. It's only growing. It's only getting worse. And the app is a big slap in the face. So you open it up because you've all seen trash out there, but you open that app up, there's a lot more trash than you even knew. Oh there's god, so much shit out there. I don't think I've ever been on public land, whether it's hiking or off-roading in the truck or, you know, quadding and not seen some kind of trash. And the same thing on on private land too, you know, it's just, it's the unfortunate byproduct of human nature. And it's, it's so... It's like wholesome and, you know, it, it feels good to see this actually happening and people doing the opposite. To, There's you know, so many people the out there that are that are into it. There, you'd be, everyone wants to dump, uh, you know, uh, accolades on us. But the amount of people that are out there into this thing, mm-hmm. I mean, we're soaked in it. I get it. But like the people out, the volunteers, people who come out and do this stuff and the people that are out there doing it without recognition are the ones who deserve it. And so it's, yeah. it's our hope to, to in this next phase to kind of move, move that focus into, into the people that are actually doing, doing the work that no one knows about. Whoever, whoever wrote this headline deserves a raise because it says gambler 500 Mad Max mixed with doing good. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's kind of the beginning of the trash lift right there. Yeah. That, that RV. Um, yeah, I don't know. That was, I think that was the Oregonian, which is our big paper here in Oregon. God darned it. Sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's find out. Let's give them credit. That is on Oregon Live. 
It's or the Oregonian. Oregonian. Yeah. Okay. The Oregonian. For, for all of my Oregon uh, listeners, I apologize the way he just said that. <laughs> I say that sometimes too. This week, off. You you say a number of things sometimes just to get under people's skin. So, <laughs> man, it's the only way you're going to get any attention these days, right? I mean, you know, I love that's kind of trending, and then then kind of yeah. Poke the bear, and man, they, they do never disappoint. Facebook, the thing I start to stay off of altogether, they, that's where the best fodder is, though. I mean, what was the uh, God. there was one the other day, and the comment was just like it blew my mind. Oh, it was the, the landfill one. It was like, yeah, they're picking up trash, but landfills are equally bad. And I was just like, wait, what? Like, how in that person's defense, yeah. I mean, their argument was about how the trash shouldn't land there, which shouldn't be there regardless, and that, like, leaching and stuff, like, the land right. are bad. And so I, unfor- he was unfortunately used as a pawn in that whole thread. <laughs> well, because he, he used deserve- equally. <laughs> like, it's not- he didn't deserve that at all. Like, <laughs> that's why I blanked his name out. Yeah, e- equally yeah. was the the word that was the issue. It's you know, equally for, bad for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I know, but that, that's not his fault that he doesn't have a command over you know words. Blame word. He didn't speak. mean it that way. He gives he gives a shit. I'd rather have a conversation and, and hang out with this guy who gives a shit about yeah. about the state of our landfills than someone who doesn't give a shit at all. Yeah, that's right. right. And so like, like I I I just used him as fodder. He didn't deserve that at all. Um, but yeah, people who care, right? It's the whole, like, I'm a, I'm a hunter. I'd rather hang out with, with a vegan or somebody who says that they believe that's, that meeting meat is wrong than someone who just like mouths, just shoves hamburgers in the mouths yep. and says, fuck animals altogether, because yep. I care about animals in a very specific way. The same way that vegans care about animals in a very specific way. We all care about, we care about animals. It's everyone else who like, who doesn't give a shit yep. that I have just like zero time for. And that's why in, intelligent debate is the most important thing. Man, I literally just rewatched the uh, Ken Ham, Bill Nye debate, you know, and it's people who care about the same thing coming at it from polar opposite sides. <laughs> no, yeah, and then, yeah, at least they're having the discussion Where, because that's what it is. Even like, oh, I mean, we won't get into the politics right now, but at least people are having a you know, discussion about about race in this country, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, if we ignore it for too long and just kind of shove it onto the surface, then, then these issues don't get brought, you don't get brought in the head. Yep. Um, what, was that a duly discovery that went by? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was, uh, that. Sam, Sam from Utah, the Utah gamblers, big shout out. If you guys listen to the podcast, huge, um, we got Dodgy, the deer destroyer, Sam, uh, Danny, Tyler, the Utah guys showed up and showed out. They showed up in the coolest trucks. It's on the RV chassis, so it's got a big block Chevy in it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Dually, four Dually fenders on it. That AC unit on top functions. What? Uh, and then the guys just, the, 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 the sweetest, coolest, genius, like, dude, I wish I had his his ingenuity. He was, And then, obviously, he's out there acting as the brakes. So that school bus yeah. had the brakes. So, uh, the, what was That's it, the, the bus. Either. And then, yeah, the Falcon, the Falcon, Falcon. Is that the, the, is that the goat hood on the back, too? That is the stinky goat hood. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wish I was, I wish I was exaggerating how bad it smelled, but it's, it was so I, bad. And then, I oh, love that. Oh, wait, sorry. No, no, no. I was just no, saying, I love that the... Back. Only vehicle that had RV rated brakes was the one slowing the bus down. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the bus, yeah, and then that's it. Yeah, BNR Auto Wrecking, uh, who just got purchased by a national company and are expanding. Uh, they took off okay. everything. I don't mean that thing was full. Uh, Danny, who's who, he's got the the Mustang uh, that went and did Hell's Revenge. With- road recovery in the mustang i don't know if you guys saw this one when there was matt did uh did a recovery of some gamblers and like danny was already in the middle of fixing it he's one of the most competent people 
fabricators, recovery guys ever. And then someone else had called Matt's Out of Road Recovery because they wanted to like meet Matt or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so Danny's got it covered. Matt shows up to kind of like, you know, do his thing and be on the show. Matt's a magnanimous, amazing dude. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Talk about a ton of charity work. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, no, it's total stud, total stud. Uh, but like he, but Danny got a lot of flack in the, in the comments for not being gracious. And Danny was like, man, like, I'm not a YouTube star. I'm not a social media guy. I was getting my truck off the mountain, and then, like, I had to deal with a bunch of cameras. <laughs> like, so, uh, in his defense, uh, uh, Danny is an amazing dude, and uh, and he handled it well. But, like, but you, you know, anybody on a keyboard at home has never been in this situation. And so, they, <laughs> they had a lot to say. We've actually been trying to get Matt on for a bit, or and really any of the more crew. They all seem like pretty good people. I've got Hefe's number in my phone. I'll give it to you. Sorry, Hefe, if you see this. Talk, Let's do it. Talk to Ross about it. Dave too, right? I had tried to trade emails with Dave and Instagram messages, and it's just it never happened. I thought I introduced. I thought I made the intro. Uh, has, okay. Hasn't happened yet. Let's put it that well, way. It hasn't happened yet. We may yet. have a little bit more time on his hands now. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's now that the show's dead. But yeah. Yes. Rest in peace. <laughs> same, okay. same thing with Fred. Fred and I have traded messages over the years and just haven't got He'll to do it. it. Dude, Fred will do it, man. So, you know, the, the thing about Fred is, is he is one of the nicest, kindest, coolest guys in the whole world. He just... He just likes to live everything day by day and hour by hour. Like he is, he is super, super fun. He has zero interest in the industry farther than it's is the people that are in it. So he likes yep. to, he, he's just, he's, he's not, he's not a business guy. He is just a, he's just a, a real guy. But he came out, he was a gambler. He was our sheriff for gambler town this year. As I say, I'm trying to find back to where I was. Where I, I know I've seen Fred on the timeline. <laughs> yeah, he was on there. We, we dressed up his Jeep in Sheriff logos, and then he recorded classic Fred the night before in the hotel room. He recorded a, a, a siren that was just his voice, and then he played it on a loop over the over the. Oh the you know, so him and I drove around and arrested people. Or no, wait, no, we deputized people. That's amazing. But he's funny in ways that I can never be funny. He's 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 hilarious, dude. That's so good. Yeah, there he is, and that's oh. that's Trail Hunter. That's Chelsea. Right there. <laughs> Trooper Fred, I love it. <laughs> Just adding adding to hats, and then we get wildness. Yeah, and then the shit show continues. Well, that oh, was all. That was Hoopty Cross. That was a Hoopty Cross track. So we had that mile long racetrack in gambler town this year so we, you know we try to Mild. you know as much as we like to get up on the high horse and, and do environment you know the environmental stuff uh we're also just out there shredding and having fun rooftop tent <laughs> yeah fucking radio they won they Did won they? outlaw dad cart uh formula go-kart this year oh, they were awesome those so guys those, those guys are real desert racers so i mean it's to be assumed Formula oh go kart. Gosh. Oh my god! We did, you know, we did. We've actually raced them in for hundred since we talked last. I got an education on desert racing. Oh, oh. It's, it's real. It's real. It's real. <laughs> it's the real thing. Uh, it's hard. It's hard. And amateurs just walking into it. Even though we passed Tech on the first rip through, uh, you know, that's a that's attributed to our awesome, uh, you know, team that that fabbed that cage up here in my shop and. And it was a great run. Uh, Chucky and I, you know, Chucky was the captain of the team. I was, you know, I held the flashlight. And, and we made it a thir 35 miles, but lost to a limousine, a Mercedes, a Jesse, and uh, Emmy Hall in the Miata. Oh, oh Emmy. Well, she, she responded to my email today, so we're good. She's a good, good one to yeah. too. <laughs> she came, she was a gambler. She raced Hoopty Cross this year. She brought Buddy. Yeah, it was good to hang out with her. She, uh, she's writing a, an article for a car and driver. Nice. Well, okay. I know I saw Buddy in the timeline. I'm just Buddy is, behind. Uh, Buddy is an icon at this point. So, fun fact: uh, she drove Jesse's Miata, which of which you know it's my Miata, but I'm just the steward of it, really. Uh, uh, at King of Hammers, and that's what inspired her to get Buddy. Really? So yeah, as long as I'm taking credit for everything, I'll take credit for that too. <laughs> Wait, all right. I think I found photos from Mint. Did you guys race a Nissan? Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Yeah, the hard body. So that's Chucky. 
there on the right, and then that's the that's the squad. Yeah, there's that. That's the hard body Nissan we built for year two of the Gambo. It's a six hundred dollar work truck that we uh, that Chuck and I had built for year two of the Gambler when it was just a trash truck, and then still a trash truck, but now it's a trash truck with a cage in it. <laughs> Value of I mean, it looks like a million bucks. Value for of truck. Stock suspension, stock everything. It's just, it's just a Nissan hard body. Stock seats? No, no, oh. no. We had that five point PRP. Okay. Thank you for giving us. He said he passed tech. Yeah, <laughs> just making industry sure. deal. Oh, fuel cell, fuel cell, the bladder tanks and stuff. That's mm-hmm. three grand, right oh, there. Man. It's insane. Yeah, there's Emmy. There's Buddy right there. Hey, buddy. There's the Justy. The Mercedes. Yep, there's, there's Bryce, Ron Set, and Golden Sadies, and then there's uh, Jim York, and uh, that's the one that got that stripped out in the desert and everything stolen out. Oh. oh no! Yeah. Has uh has Texas Dave ever done any of these? I feel like he'd fit right in. I um, don't know. That's we a long his track, though. Yeah, I would say that's a long drive from Texas to Oregon. So. Oh, <laughs> uh, did he ever come up here? No, we go there. They they host oh, yeah. our national. Uh, Cross races oh. there at the at the rally ready. Rally ready. Okay. So, yeah, Texas Dave, man. Have you has he been a he's been a guest on your show, right? Two times. Multiple, like, multiple. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. he's a that, I don't like verbally jousting with him. He's far too intelligent. Dude, he's so quick. He's so, <laughs> so quick. <laughs> and so many accents. <laughs> yeah, no, he's hilarious. He's hilarious. I, he makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a. <laughs> That's a solid statement of Dave. You're like, wait, hold on. We're too deep into this conversation. I lost track about five minutes ago. Uh, yeah, now I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, he's, a pug- he's a pugilist. And so he'll engage with you, he'll, like lock horns with you. And then like, and in a very, in a very endearing, nice way. But like, like you just, he just has jokes beyond more. He's, more, he's got more jokes than you, like always. Yeah, he, uh, he is deserving of the success that he's brought upon himself. Dude, and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, don't go to the top of Good, good, good thing he's built down there. Yeah. And uh, adopt the puppers for anybody listening. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what is that? He so where they're at in Austin. Oh, the pupper, the puppers. dog thing. Yeah. yeah. Where they're at in Austin, there's so many dogs out there. So it, I, I feel like I see more things from him saying like, "Hey, I got another dog," than I do for actual rally cars. <laughs> I think that's just, is that like his girlfriend's thing. Uh, I just know they showed up at the ranch and they were like rally rescue. Nice. Good. Yeah. 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 Whatever it is. I think, I, I don't know. I met, there's almost a little bit of a commune kind of like cult thing going on out there. Dude, What's I got so. You guys got super scared all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> you said the C word. I, I was distracted by off-road driving vehicles and, and what a, a helicopter that looks like Airwolf. Which is a really old reference for people. Oh, that, that was the helicopter was dragging uh, Robbie Gordon's uh, speed speed UTV away. Oh or something. yeah, was it? No, wait, no, that was a Hammers. No, oh, okay, that was a Hammers. Yeah, the it's speed UTV been. that, just like the Cybertruck and the Roadster and the Semi. Don't worry, it's on its way. Uh, See, yeah, that I, looks a I, little I, like Airwolf. It does look like Airwolf. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but while we're talking about ATVs or UTVs, they suck. Like, they're terrible. <laughs> They've destroyed the off-road industry, the culture, everything about UTVs are terrible. <sighs> the proliferation of the enormous oversized UTVs and the... And I'm, I'm in it, you know, that's like my primary world. And I, I see more people than not that are that are acting like assholes. Um, it... You know, it, it gives the hobby a bad name. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> this is fucking fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys weren't looking for a sponsorship from Polaris, by the way. Uh, that, that video got seen like five million times. Ro- Ro- Ross may have a scrambler at his house right now from yeah, Polaris. I got a long-term Polaris <laughs> Press 18. Hey, man, no, prove me wrong. They look fun, but I can get the same. I, I can buy a tracker. I can buy 50 trackers. For oh, some yeah. Time. I'm not denying that for a second. I, I, I'm speaking fully from the point of view that the one in my garage isn't something I paid for, you know? But, like, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I, I think the thing that people forget, and this is coming back to something we were talking about before, and, not in the sake of getting all preachy, but like we're all in it for the same thing. It's just a matter of how people approach 
the hobby, you know, and, and like the side by sides, you can go so fast and not feel anything versus like, if you, if you did 45 miles an hour up some of the trails in a Jeep, like you'd, you'd have a horrible chiropractor appointment, you know, the following week. And I think that enables people to feel like they can be above the law, you know, just because they can do what they didn't think was possible in their past life, driving a land cruiser or something. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's disheartening to see what some people do with side by sides. And frankly, most of it that I see is in combination, in conjunction with some kind of uh, can of alcohol in their hand, which is also fucking yeah. horrible. Yeah. And like, it's, it's not going to bring upon anything good. And like, it, it just sucks to see it because it'll eventually mean the end of some aspect of the hobby, hobby for either somebody who's enjoying it and gets hurt or worse because they're on the receiving end of the alcohol influence and the person that's hammered behind the wheel of a 2,500 pound machine with 250 horsepower. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to go too deep into this. It's just, it, it's like a sore subject because it's like there's people out there who you think share the same end goal and love for the hobby and enthusiasm and everything. And really what they're doing is, is, you know, acting in ways that's just going to kill the whole thing. My wife asks why we don't just drive to Moab and then rent a Jeep or rent a UTV. And it's because as off-roaders, like, building the truck and building the thing is is the fun part and that's that's an that's an extension of us yep. so like taking the land cruiser or the bronco or whatever it is through that that that's what the fun part driving someone else's uh, jeep or utv they built or you know if it's yamaha's or whoever is that that's not that's not you know i get it i've rented one down there before and it is a cheat code mm -hmm. and it was like it was okay like that was that was too easy though like oh, yeah Hell, like hell's revenge is a joke is a joke in a utv like i would never i wouldn't even ever even tell anyone i did that because that is <laughs> it is the easiest thing in the world yeah. you know you know go take a in the 1978 cj5 you know with with you know no lockers through on oh, 31 God. now all of a sudden that was an adventure and mm -hmm. something that you can like experience but yeah the utv through through most of the trails in, you know, short of like Pritchett or even Poison Spider, uh, you know, down there is like, it's just, it's yeah. just, just a little crude. Anyone can do it. And I, I think that also plays to something that we're seeing and really getting into the weeds here. But like the aspect of like one-upsmanship in off-roading, like I did it better than you. I did it on one try. I did it, you know, without locking the front rear diff is becoming a big thing versus like, there was, and it's something that I'm grateful we still have in the Northeast in the truck world, at least is like the camaraderie behind like helping each other do it, like getting out and spotting and taking the time to like guide somebody through something and celebrating when everybody gets through, you know, without pulling cable versus like in the side-by-sides, it's just like people scoffing at somebody if they didn't make it up an obstacle on their first try, you know, and it's a... That's why you bring a Pontiac vibe out. Dude, yeah. I love that. Yeah. And to be honest, if you get the all-wheel drive version and you weld up the viscous clutch in the drive line <laughs> and the rear differential, <laughs> dude, it is. It is capable. We did we did Hell's Revenge start to finish and it took the hard way out, not the cheater way out. Uh, and they, they are incre they're incredible, incredible machines. What about a uh, Toyota Matrix? Same, same. Yeah, yeah. The vibe is just, you know, it's Pontiac. So everyone just assumes it's shittier and yeah. they're cheaper to buy. It's funnier to say Pontiac vibe. It's got a vibe. Yeah. Same, what same. Is... They're all based on the Corolla. They're all Corolla based, which is how we got here because a Corolla won the the first gambler ever. It's a Geo Prism. Sorry, it's a Geo Prism. Uh, all know <laughs> Still a Corolla. <laughs> and unstoppable. Unstoppable. Oh. Fantastic cars. I have to go really and deep for vibe photos. Uh, I, so I apologize for that. It's, it, it is more. I'm shitting on the people, really. I'm not <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, you should. I would say you're shitting on the behavior. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. specific behavior. 
Just yeah. like uh, kill all litter bugs. So. Oh, we got him a gambler. It's not like we don't got him a gambler. It's not like I don't spend five hours every night telling people not to fucking act like assholes, you yeah. know, because you get yeah. enough alcohol on people, they're going to want to just do stupid shit. Yeah, dude. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they had the GR Corolla. They had the GR Corolla recipe there in, in there 20 years ago. Yeah. They wouldn't put it together, though. They didn't put the all-wheel drive and the six-speed and the high-revving uh, four-banger in there. Until I mean, but they had it. You could have built. Yeah. You could, they could have had it twenty years ago, and it would have been available on the used market now for a tenth of the price of a uh, marked up GR Corolla. Yeah. <laughs> How much are they going for? I haven't even priced it. Uh, I've not even looked. I think ADM has come down to like seventy five hundred. Eighty thousand no, dollars. No, no, no. AD, a, my Bronco. ADM, the dealer markup. I think they're. I think they're tacking like. Seventy five hundred bucks for ten grand on them, which is absurd. But like, still makes it what sixty something. Uh, I think you can get like the core, the one that you'd want to buy is like high thirties, so it's still fifty grand plus tax. You know, ah, like fifties a new thirty five. Yeah, you would say. Is that what they, well, is, and is that because no one can afford houses anymore? So we're just giving up on buying houses and. Yeah, we're just Buying living in cars. cars. Uh, nothing cars, says uh, uh, sustain the economy and like let people take out a whole bunch of extra debt on uh, on you know, interest that they already can't afford. <laughs> so it says that GR Corolla starts at thirty five thousand dollars. Yeah, I think the good ones like just shy of forty, like thirty eight. Core is thirty five nine. Circuit edition is forty two nine, and then the Morizo, which has no back seat, is forty nine nine. Yeah, because that's what you want. Uh, ask Johnny. See how much Johnny's getting this for. Did you say chorizo? Morizo. But chorizo oh, sounds yeah. a lot better to eat right now. That sounds yeah. so much like a... It only comes in three colors. Color. Black, white, or red. I thought there was like a gray... I don't know. We're, why are we talking I think about a white one. one. None of us... For are the, the core edition. I've seen one of these so far. Oh my gosh. So know. many packages. Person, yeah. I was, Ross, I could have driven one when I was up at that event and at Road America. Mama? Yeah, but I was so busy driving the 14 other off-road vehicles in a day and a half that yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even walk over by the track. Like, mm -hmm. I could have driven it on track at Road America and I didn't. On the road again. Yeah, that's, that's a different idea. podcast. Go to LS Fest? Yeah. Nice. I've never, I still haven't been, we, we, we run our East Coast coordinator runs the Hoopty Cross events down there. Uh, but we haven't, we haven't gone, I haven't, I, I'd like to go. The one is in it, Kentucky. Yeah, the one that's uh, like Holly sponsors it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah East, so it comes up in September. Good, well maybe I'll go out there. Yeah. It's for they have a countdown actually. It's forty four days, nine hours and forty minutes nice. and thirty four seconds. <laughs> right. Not to be too specific. Oh, uh, I should plug. We have we have a, a race at UMC in Utah uh, in October as well. It's Ooh. on the Hoopty Cross website. That's the. Is that the place that Lotus bought? Somebody uh, just bought it. It just changed hands. I know that the the. It used to be... Godfrey's. The Godfrey's are really integrated out there. It used to be Miller Motorsport Park, but now it's... That sounds right. Yeah. And then it became... The super picturesque one they did the Ford GT launch at. Yeah. Well, I think for a while Ford had programs there all the time. Now it's just Utah Motorsport Campus. I think Lotus. I thought I think Geely bought it is what happened. Maybe. Yeah, so, yeah, ours is October, October seventh uh, and eighth. Yeah, uh, we've got our Hoopty Cross event, and that that one's special because it, we're gonna do side by side racing. So normally, your favorite for insurance reasons, we have to do <laughs> basically time attack stuff. Yeah. So this will be this will be we'll have two lanes and be able to so go tandem, wheel to wheel. Yeah, but you have to stay in your lane. It's right. Like, right. Uh, I've I've also seen the dad carting videos where people are supposed to stay in their lanes, probably. So no, no, there's no rule for dad cart. That's because I mean, people. Yeah, you can only. Well, I, I don't know what the premise of that is. Uh, I'm just assuming my insurance hasn't seen those videos. It's like God, the hope so. international race of champions thing they do now. 
with a yeah with the two lanes and like sometimes they do side by side sometimes they do like rally cars uh so we've got we've got one in sturgis coming up july 15th um one in washington august 5th and 6th and then we've got the holly ellis fest east September 9th and 10th, and then September 16th and 17th is Mopar Party, and then September 30th and, and uh, <laughs> October 1st is Holly Ford Fest. It, out, all out there in Bowling Green, Kentucky, mm. we've got uh, Hoopty Cross Racing. So if anybody wants to go out there and race, hooptyx.com, you can sign up. And then as well as the rally in Salt Lake, that's uh, that's October 7th and 8th. That's going to be freaking awesome. I'll be at that one. I, I kind of wish there was a vehicle that I could take to LS Fest, Mo Party, and Ford Fest all at the same time. Find something that's split. Like I need to build something oh, I with see. an LS on a Ford chassis, and then <clears throat> I think it's all based on power plant, though. I mean, LS uh, Fest obviously that's the thing yeah. they allow anything in there as long as it's got an LS in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mopar Party and Forge probably. I bet there's a lot of LS powered Fords at Ford Fest. If- we're going to be honest. I don't yeah. doubt that. Um, that so, was years yeah. ago when I used to work at the classic uh, truck parts company. That was always like the, you'd see people just be like, that's an abomination. You can't put an Ellis in a Ford. Like, calm down. You put, a, you put an engine in anything. Like, Yeah. I, for, yeah, that's been the standard since the late 80s. Uh, yeah. It's just dropping small block Chevys and everything. I was a hot rod guy before I was an off-road guy. So, Dude, I remember. Well, the, the glory of it now, it's just like the the everything they talk about is like, what is the what's the electric version of an LS crate engine? Like, that's all anyone will discuss in that space. We're like, well, it's going to be a Tesla it's motor. A Tesla motor, yeah, it's Tesla motor yeah. battery. Like that's what... yeah, because what AEM AEM slash Holly bought AEM. They 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 have all the brains and everything to connect all that stuff. Um. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I don't know. They're, they're, anybody who's the same people who, who who shit on electric motors, the same people who get in Facebook arguments about politics. Like, <laughs> yes. Why not just have both of? Why not have both of those things? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, have a like I want an electric hot rod and a gas hot rod and all the hot rods. Oh, well, I, I want an electric daily and a fucking fire breather on the weekends. You know, like have your cake and eat it too. And then Toyota drops their potential solid state battery technology this that they're hinting at 900 miles of range and charging in oh, 10 minutes oh geez what does that mean what does solid state mean chris uh it's it's the so basically um it with the name suggests it's not lithium ion like we have for everything else right now it's solid electrolytes as opposed to a liquid so it's actually a solid mass in the battery as opposed to liquids that we're using for most uh, chemical batteries right now. So, so Okay, now I totally understand the technology thing. <laughs> yeah. Solids are obviously better. Paging Jason Fenske. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. People are way more intelligent than me. You can actually explain it. But the, the biggest issue for them is that, that they can... They have proof of concept on the on the batteries, but their issue with them is uh, how to manufacture them at such a high rate to put them in millions and millions of vehicles. And that's been the big drawback currently with solid state because the the real alternative is lithium ion batteries. We know how to make those gangbusters. And so hence the fact that we have all these lithium mines and whatever. If they can figure that out, then can Chevy, since they just announced another generation of the Bolt, figure out how to not make it look fucking terrible? Uh, that's a different conversation. <laughs> that's not that's not technology based. That's looks based. Yeah, it's I subjective. Know, I know, I know. I'm just being a shitter because I'm. So, in in reality, they they should be less. It looks um, like they, an Aveo. Did the new one? <laughs> the bolt, yeah, that's because like it effectively is. I would say I think it's the electric Aveo, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it is. Can we get a Geo Metro again? That's what I want. Like, can Chevy bring back Metro? Like, uh, yeah. I mean, isn't that what the isn't that what the Blazer is? Isn't that effective? Oh, oh, poor Blazer. Didn't I swear I saw something recently that they were actually going to do like an off road Z seventy one version of the Blazer? Homie, did you see the Z seventy one version of the new Traverse? Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, there's a, a, a Z71 oh. 
conspiracy theory, they don't make any versions but Z71 versions <laughs> of, like, the fucking Tahoe. That's for sure. I mean, a not Z71 Tahoe? Dude, almost none Never. of them out here are Z71s anymore. When I was a kid, like, the GMT oh, really? 800 and the early 900s, all of them were Z71s. Now, like, I turn my head when I see a Z71. No, that's got red hooks on it. So. <laughs> yes, that, it has Chris's favorite aesthetic attribute. That's thing. a Z71. That's yeah. a Z71. It's got a badge on the, yeah. yeah. They're all of that. That's, all, that's what my wife's got right now. No. Out, yeah, that's what she drives. No, that's but this traverse. is the Traverse. She can't drive that. That doesn't exist That yet. doesn't exist yet. She gets what she wants. Uh, oh, what the oh. fuck is happening with that C pillar? Can you pull up a side, Chris? Can you pull up a side? Oh, I gotta go back. Real quick. I, I didn't know that. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, Scott. You can be on the podcast. No, you didn't invite me, and now I'm going. How was I supposed to know that you were coming over to show up? Scott, technically, you're already on the show because it's live too, bud. So, podcast, Scott. Is my buddy Scott? Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. What's, up, dude? What's this about? <laughs> Don't hold me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the this is live on YouTube, guys. <laughs> Ross, I can't get a dead-on side shot. All right, it's probably better that way. But what is this podcast about? Uh, it's about off-roading. So off, it's, off, off yeah. it's about the four-by-four four things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. He's an expert. I found one for you, Ross. Scott knows everything about four-wheel drives. We just Good. go over things. Yeah, bounce and yeah. suspension. Bounce. He does have a mini bike, and though. Keep bouncing. <laughs> yeah, that's the side of it. Hi, right, brother. Thank you. Bye. You want Bye, Scott. Dude, look. What? Bye, buddy. So I know fro- floating roofs are a thing, but, like, what? why? Floating floating C pillars. Why? I got D pillars. Yeah, it, 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 it's not good. Yeah, I don't like it. Structurally, it doesn't seem sound, so I, I don't hate it. <laughs> it's like a reverse shark fin. Like, the plane fin should be flipped to be the vertical stabilizer. It's like. so dumb. It's so dumb. So, wait, what is the traverse? That's that's the mid, that's the that's mid-size the, FPV, then? It's the full-size It's their three-row three crossover. But it's smaller than the Tahoe. It's I right think, yes. the Tahoe. Uh, I think it's technically as long or longer than the Tahoe. But it's body on frame then, no, so it's, 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 same as it's the unibody front wheel drive transverse. Like, oh, yeah, okay. it's it's sing, it's not a no. It's like you know. So it's enough truck for ninety nine percent of the people who are going to buy it. God, yes. ninety nine point nine. Yeah. So a traverse, a traverse is two oh five. There you go. And a Tahoe is two ten, so it's five inches shorter yeah. than a Tahoe. Interesting. Okay, still. Probably quite a bit narrower. Yeah, it's not. In any capacity. It's If you've got two to three kids, it's perfect. Yeah. I, sweet. Oh, that's why I bought a two-door Bronco, though, is, like, I want them to suffer. <laughs> like, I, I grew up in the backseat of a Volkswagen Bug, you know? Yeah. And this yeah. was in a time, like, the Bug was already... 30 years old. Like, there was no need for that. Mm-hmm. Like, the, yeah. my parents just made me, made me suffer. How, uh, how, uh, how old are they now? My parents? No, your kids. No, your kids. <laughs> my kids. Oh, they're, they're, uh, they're, 13, they're 13 and 15. My daughter, okay. yeah, my, they're up to my ear, and I'm so six can, and four. they can acrobat themselves into the back of the boat. Yeah, yeah, but it's good. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. I want them to make their kids suffer. They don't suffer a lot the rest of their lives, yeah. but they can jump right, right? back to that thing. So I, I got like, uh, when when kid? How old is a kid? My daughter just turned one, so I'm oh, a little ways out. How old, how old is it when a child can climb in and out of the back of a two door vehicle on their own? God, God. Um, four and a half or something. Five. Yeah. You're still like there behind them. Yeah. Like because they'll fall uh, every time. Yeah, I don't know, man. But I don't envy the next two years of your life at all. <laughs> yeah, my oh, my youngest is five, Tate, and I still yeah. help her in. <laughs> I can't believe she's five. Yeah, but at least like at least five, dude. They're your homies. Like you guys yeah. go on adventures and like have conversations and like, hang out. A oh, one year old is just a lump of fat. <laughs> uh, man, dude, this kid is like literally running. I'm not even joking. No, I'm sure your kid is perfect. She's. <laughs> Her dad will kick your dad's. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What? I don't know, man. 
What just happened there? I'm uh, glitching. I, I'm a weenie. You got. You probably could kick my ass. I'm not. Oh uh, yeah. Oh. I don't. Fight I just. It. it wouldn't happen. <laughs> Dude, you haven't even met like two and three and four and like. See, I. I feel like everyone talks about two, three, four ish, but to me, it was like six, seven, eight, nine was way worse. Because they can they articulate free will. Yeah, and they can articulate. So not like when they're two or three, they're mad at you and they're just screaming, but they can't tell you why. <laughs> like they they don't know why. They're just like ah, just like they're little balls of rage. But at like That's six, seven, eight, nine, they're like, I hate you, and this is exactly why I hate you because you haven't let me do the Your thing I want to do. Your kids are just apples, I think. <laughs> yeah. Also, my kids were cool at that age. So. Little balls of rage, great band name. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Like, that's your teenage. Uh, that's the the battle of bands, men. Yeah. This is what <laughs> little balls, balls of rage is what. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that. That's so bad. Jerry Lee Lewis missed it. It was great balls of fire. Could have been little balls of rage. Right. He just little missed balls it. Of rage. Johnny Cash. <laughs> in, the, in the multiverse somewhere, that's the name of his song. <laughs> Johnny Cash. That, that's balls. what they're singing in Top Gun Goose. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good movie. <laughs> this is a good film. Top Gun Goose. Oh boy. I had to keep I had to keep iterating on the different multiverse. Yeah, like I yeah. had to keep <laughs> I, need to re- I, I gotta rewatch that. Did you guys watch the the Flash movie? I just saw it the other day with my kids. No, I haven't seen that one yet. It's all about the multiverse as well. I thought it was strange <laughs> that both of those universes went in. I feel like there's just setting it up for a crossover of a DC Marvel multiverse. Dude, the amount of money that it will take for that crossover. <laughs> That's why uh, getting three to one on those dollars. Though. Yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah, that's why I like Who Framed Roger Rabbit was such a unicorn for us because it was Disney and uh, Hanna Barbera and Looney Tunes like all mixed into one movie. <clears throat> okay, so everybody at home, Roger Rabbit was <laughs> an animated live action <laughs> film that came out like in the mid nineties. But I just <sighs> want to Google it and then <sighs> maybe just pause the podcast. Come back. There was a there was a very sexualized uh, cartoon figure named Jessica Rabbit. And surprisingly, not a rabbit. Anyways, yeah. Google it. Come back. Oh so my god! Tate, still. that movie came out before Ross was alive. No, was it? Nineteen eighty-eight. Okay, yeah. That was I, was I even meant the. Yep. That is before I was alive. I I was old enough to watch it in the theater and enjoyed the crap out of it. It was terrifying at times, but it was amazing. <laughs> it was it was strange. Uh, not as strange as Howard the Duck, though. I see. I wasn't old enough for Howard the Duck when it first came out. You're still not old enough for Howard. The Duck. <laughs> Howard the Duck was 1986. I was even. I was even. I was only six. <laughs> oh shit! Where this? I was born in '79. See, yeah, I'm just. I'm a year behind you. I was '80. Yeah, '80. All right. Yeah, forties are great, right? Dude, they're fine, man. Like, I've, I, yeah, I'm happy with it. My knees just hurt more. <laughs> that is true. My wife sometimes asks me if I'm okay when I get out of the bed in the morning. I'm like, this is just how I am now. Yeah, <laughs> like, this is my my resting so state is aches and pains, yeah. <laughs> balls All of right. fire. <laughs> All right. Little balls well, of fire. I'm gonna yeah. wrap up the show. Yeah. Okay. So you can rate review wherever you listen to the podcast. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. I'm going I'm to shut down the live in a little bit. You can follow Tate at, at Gambler, at the Gambler 500 and at yeah. Sons of Smokey. Yep. Those are the two, two major ones. Uh, follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on, I, I need to stop saying on Twitter because Jeff is not doing anything with Twitter. Isn't so it, the real Hooniverse on what Instagram. What the hell is Jeff doing these days anyways? Well, I mean, this is another, maybe not a top topic of another podcast, but I, I miss that guy. I love that guy. Well, he, he's doing a, a head-to-head show with Johnny Lieberman now. So head-to-head drag race. So lot, okay. lots of production value and driving things fast and straight lines. All right. Well, hopefully we get the invite <laughs> to that show. He's driving cars that cost as much as my house. Dope. Yep. All right, well, and that that's, awesome. and I would say that's an East Coast house, Tate. So it is it is a little higher price than what I'm used to out here in the East Midwest. Coast, so that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's it. That's our show. Thanks, Tate. Thanks, Tate. Thanks for having me. This was a pleasure.